Hello and welcome to this lesson where we will go over Blood Brothers, which is a modern tragedy by Willie Russell. Now, as you can see behind me, essentially what I thought would be really useful is to summarize using a mind map the entire plot in a nutshell so that you can get a general understanding, especially if you're revising this play for your exams, for your coursework, okay? So what we're gonna do within this lesson is basically go over all the main events that occur within this modern tragedy, okay? And remember, a modern tragedy or any type of tragedy is a play or a story where you have a protagonist who tends to have a fatal flaw that leads to the downfall, okay? And of course, in Blood Brothers, there are two protagonists, Mickey and Edward, both of whom are twins, okay? You could also arguably add Mrs. Johnstone, okay? But the main protagonists, of course, are the twins. So let's go over the main series and sequence of events that lead, of course, to the ultimate downfall and deaths of both twins, okay? Plot spoiler alert. Now, the play and the entire narrative begins when we learn about Mrs. Johnstone. She's a lady who's a single mother who is a very struggling single mother. She already has lots of children, lots of mouths to feed, and she's really struggling to even keep up with all these different children in terms of just looking after them and caring for them, okay? And she discovers to her shock that she is pregnant with twins, okay? So she's wondering, what am I gonna do? I'm just a cleaner. I literally can't afford the current children I have, let alone add more children to my family. How will I feed them? Now, she is working for a boss and a lady who's called Mrs. Lyons. She is what we would consider an upper middle class lady and woman who has a husband that's very financially stable and she's a stay at home woman who has been wanting to have a child for such a long time but she's not able to bear her own children. Now, she realizes that her cleaner, her employee Mrs. Johnstone is pregnant and she doesn't know what to do and Mrs. Lyons, who really wants a child, basically makes a bar bargain with her, okay? She makes a Faustian pact with her and she persuades Mrs. Johnstone to part with just one of her sons, okay? She tells Mrs. Johnstone, look, I'll definitely look after your son. Trust me, he's going to be in good hands. And on top of that, you know, can you afford really to look after this child as a cleaner? Okay. And Mrs. Johnstone, who was struggling to know what she's going to do with these two twins, this is music to her ears initially. Okay. So Mrs. Johnstone is persuaded and she does give her one of her sons and Mrs. Johnstone keeps one of the children. Okay. So Mrs. Lyons has a son called Edward, who's going to be raised by her whilst Mrs. Johnston keeps Mickey, okay, the other twin. And of course, they both promise that they will never let these two children know that they are related. However, Mrs. Johnston um, continues working for her. And of course, Mrs. Lyons, who has a husband, he's been traveling, she kind of, she's very scheming. So she figures out a way to kind of appear that like she's pregnant, her husband isn't there for most of the time anyway. And then she manages to convince her husband that they did have a baby, they finally conceived. And of course, her husband, Mr. Lyons, is very happy, okay? So they uh, raise a family and of course Mrs. Lyons within this family is the only one that knows that Edward is not her biological son. Now, Mrs. Lyons keeps of course employing Mrs. Johnstone but she gradually begins to dislike how Mrs. Johnstone, when she comes in, she fusses over Edward. Of course, Edward is her son. So Mrs. Johnstone sometimes will fuss over her, or over him rather, whilst she's working around the house. Mrs. Lyons, who's very possessive of her son, she doesn't like this. And of course, also remember that Mrs. Lyons is quite classist. So also she doesn't really want Edward to have any of the uh, you know working class habits or attributes that her, his mother will have, okay? So she really doesn't like this and she ends up firing Mrs. Johnstone, who feels betrayed, okay? So even if Mrs. Lyons does offer her a payout, Mrs. Johnstone does feel quite betrayed because she thought she would at least have the chance to see her son grow up. Now, there's a period which of course fast forwards and then we realize that Mrs. Johnstone and her son Mickey, as well as her family, lead a very separate life, a much more difficult life as working class people to Mrs. Lyons, her husband, as well as Edward, okay? However, at seven years old, both Mickey and Edward finally meet, become really good friends, and adding to the mix is within the estate that Mickey lives in, Linda, the uh, female friend, the uh, you know girl child, they uh, become a trio of three really good inseparable friends. The only difference, and of course at this age, they don't quite understand class, okay? So Edward just kind of sees Mickey as somebody who he really looks up to. He goes to a bit of a snobby primary school, 
so he really just likes how edgy both his friend Mickey and Linda really are, okay? He really enjoys this. So they become friends and they get into a little bit of trouble, okay? So Edward starts kind of mimicking what Linda and Mickey do as well as the other children, the other working class children, and they start throwing stones at windows which gets them into trouble with the police. Now, Mrs. Lyons finds this out, okay? And the police catch all the children the police treat Mickey quite harshly. When the police approaches Mrs. Johnstone, he's very stern. He tells Mickey, and of course also his older brother, who's called Sammy, who's developed a reputation for being a little bit of a bad boy. Mrs. Johnstone is really punished quite heavily in terms of the police giving her, her a stern warning. When the police, however, talks to Mrs. Lyons and Edward, okay, telling her that Edward has gotten himself into a little bit of trouble for throwing stones at windows, okay, he is much more kinder to her. He says, you know, make sure, I understand children like Edward can be a little bit, you know, boisterous, but be careful. And again, we can see here that even society begins to treat Edward much more favorably as a middle-class son of prosperous parents than Mickey, who's a working-class son of a single mother. However, this is not enough for Mrs. Lyons. She doesn't like this. She doesn't like the fact that her son is associating with his twin, of course, Edward does not know. Mickey and Edward do not make the connection that they are twins, okay? So Mrs. Lyons convinces her husband that they need to move, and they do so, okay? So they move, and then again, there's a separation. So Mrs. Lyons always comes in and separates, creates a wall between Edward and Mickey. However, we then also realize, of course, the Johnstones who are housed by the council, they can't afford to live in their own accommodation, and also Linda, whose family is housed by the council, they are told that they're going to be rehoused, and they end up moving to the same area that Mrs. Lyons and her husband, as well as Edward, have moved to. So then the story moves forward. It starts shifting very quickly, okay? The play, especially in Act 2, really starts speeding up, and the narrative and the sequence of events get faster and faster. So then Mickey, Linda, and Edward end up reuniting uniting as friends now as teenagers okay in this new environment and of course we still know that there's a massive difference between Edward who goes to private school versus Mickey and Linda who go to state school not a great quality of education they kind of get into a bit of trouble Mickey doesn't get great grades in his school and we start seeing an even bigger divide between Edward's life whereby he ends up aiming for and going to university versus Mickey who doesn't get any qualifications and Linda who falls pregnant quite early, okay? So Mickey, Linda and Edward, of course, reunite again and become friends as teenagers until Edward ends up going off to university. But of course, Edward wants to carry on being friends and, you know, they, uh, Edward promises every time he comes back from university, he really wants to hang out, okay? Now, we then realise that Linda, who her and Mickey, of course, now they mature and they become romantically involved and she ends up falling pregnant, okay? And she ends up falling pregnant fairly early. And we also get the undertone that Edward might be in love with her, but he hides this from her. Now, Edward, uh, Linda falls pregnant and Mickey does marry her. He does the right thing, he marries her. However, Mickey gets a factory job after he marries Linda and ultimately he ends up losing this factory job because of layoffs and um, we start realizing that whilst Edward's life is becoming much more stable he's getting a good qualification he's going to get a much better paid job he's going to have a lot of stability and in fact his dad is also an employer Mickey will find himself in this cycle of poverty that his own mother experiences the cycle of poverty bad pay and constant insecurity and of course also he will become the father that becomes worried how can i provide for my wife linda and our child okay now unemployed because mickey falls unemployed he loses his factory job he is given a proposition by his older brother sammy the naughty one who becomes a criminal. Now, Sammy kind of portrays to Mickey, look, this crime, I promise you, you're gonna be absolutely fine, okay? We're gonna get just this quick money. You need it, I need it, let's do it, okay? So an unemployed Mickey commits a crime with Sammy. However, they are caught and they both end up going to prison, okay? Which carries on that cycle of poverty amongst the working classes. And also now we're seeing how the law treats Mickey quite harshly versus how the law will favor Edward and protect Edward, who's middle class. Then, in jail, Mickey gets depressed, okay? He finds that his life is going in a downward spiral. He gets depressed. He starts using pills to help with his depression. However, he becomes addicted and he becomes almost a different person. And even once he comes out, Linda finds that there's an emotional disconnect between them. And don't forget, Edward still lives in the same city and Linda and Edward still have a connection going on, okay? 
So Mickey ends up leaving prison after doing a stint in prison. He gets a new job. However, we realize that Linda and Edward, now they kind of start having a light romance and they basically have an affair, okay? Which Mickey discovers and he becomes devastated. Edward, who has everything, is gonna take the only good thing away from him, which is Linda, and he cannot have it. So this therefore accelerates the tragedy because Mickey ends up getting Sammy's gun. He finds Edward at the town hall where he works. Okay, so he's getting a really nice, comfortable job at the town hall. He finds Edward and he threatens to kill him. And of course, Mickey, who's in a rage, his mother, Mrs. Johnstone, is chasing him. Mickey, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, okay? And Mrs. Johnstone is really, really struggling whether she should reveal to him that they are related, they are brothers indeed, or to kind of try to control the situation. She's figuring out what can I do to stop this tragedy from happening. However, Ultimately, Mrs. Johnstone, because she realizes that Mickey is serious about committing this crime, she reveals to both of them that they are twins. Mickey, who's waving around a gun, ends up accidentally killing Edward as the police arrive. And as Edward dies, the police do shoot Mickey and Mickey also dies, okay? Which of course finishes off this tragedy, which makes us really deeply reflect on class divisions and how life is very different depending on the environment that you grow up in, okay? And this is especially shown between both protagonists, the character of Edward versus the character of Mickey, okay? So that's really it when it comes to understanding the sequence of events that happen within Blood Brothers and how, especially within Act 2, this tragedy accelerates to its ultimate tragic ending.